Morena, Ketsipe Heakwe, how are you doing? Um, how am I? I am uh, maybe Katie Nginge, I hope, just a little tired at the moment. Buenos uh, dias, como estas? How are you doing? Hey, I'm muy bien, always bien. Hey, super good to see you. Uh, so excited that you're jo joining us for church uh, this morning. Um, I'm really excited about what's happening this morning. So obviously I've looked through all the different bits. We're going to have Nick leading us in worship with some really cool songs that um, I just love. It's going to be really cool. We watch this, uh, my family, we watch this around the dining room table and we sing away, which is always a bit weird, but it's really cool. So it's going to be good. And then TJ is going to be reading through Psalm 139, which is the one that I'm going to be preaching on a little bit later. But after TJ, um, Josephine, my amazing wife, is going to lead us in a little prayer. Uh, and then, yeah, I'm going to preach on Psalm 139, which I'm just so excited about. I've just loved studying it um, this past week. And then Dave's going to close us out with a prayer uh, right at the end of the service. So that's where we're heading. Um, and again, just so excited that you're going to join us. I'd encourage you to try and participate, right? So if you can sing during the singing, that'd be cool during the sermon. There's some of those, you know, turn to someone and say. So just try and engage and, and really meet Jesus this morning. That's really my prayer for you. So it's fantastic to have you here. Great to kind of see you um, this morning. And may the Lord bless you. May he speak powerfully and mightily uh, to you this morning. May he remind you that he just loves you and delights in you so much. Cool, let's worship together as Nick leads us. Him. 
Washing over me, your face is all I seek. You are my everything, Jesus Christ. You are my one desire, Lord. Hear my only cry to know you all my life.
cantar It only is your name With everything I've got My heart will sing How I love you And only are you God Oh, holy is your name With everything I've got oh, My heart will sing How I love only are you week on Wednesday I shared this same verse but it's just so good it's first John 4 16 and 17 we know how much God loves us and we have put our trust in his love God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them and as we live in God our love grows more perfect so we'll not be afraid on the day of judgment but we can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in this world. <laughs> Just an amazing picture. The God who is love loves us and we can put our trust in his perfect love, not trust in these imperfect things in this world, but in this perfect, beautiful, awe-inspiring love that emanates from the source of love and there's just so much stuff in this world trying to imitate that love but man being linked in with the love of God is unlike anything else so let's continue to sing about this love the source love
sing to you. To me, a kitter on me. To me, a kitter fenua. To me, a kitter nako. Honga tangata katua. There is but one love, and it is your love. It's To our pain, revealing hope again. Your love has freed us. We're free indeed. Spoken to our pain, revealing hope again. Oh, your love has freed us. We're free indeed. Spoken to our pain, revealing hope. Yeah. Your love has freed us. We're free indeed. Spoken to our pain, revealing hope. Yeah. Oh God, your love has freed us. Your love that comes from the source of source of love, you. And we just want to be covered in that love today. Thank you, Lord, that you you don't hold back with your love. Your love of freedom, your love of renewal, your love of comfort. Oh God, words cannot express. But Lord God, we feel loved. Sí. 
CBC Fano. Today I'll be reading from Psalm 139 and it'll be in the NRT version. O oh Lord, you have examined my heart and know everything about me. You know when I sit down or stand up. You know my thoughts even when I'm far away. You see when I travel and when I rest at home. You know everything I do. You know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. You go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go up to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the furthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night, but even in darkness I cannot hide from you. To you the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. You made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvellous. How well I know it. 
You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. O oh God, if only you would destroy the wicked, Get out of my life, you murderers. They blaspheme you. Your enemies misuse your name. O oh Lord, shouldn't I hate those who hate you? Shouldn't I despise those who oppose you? Yes, I hate them with total hatred, for your enemies are my enemies. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path of everlasting life. Morena Sibisi Fano, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we um, just thank you for this reading of your word. Thank you for um, the power that there is just simply in that. And um, Lord, we just um, want to settle at your feet this morning and um, just receive those words, Lord. I thank you that um, uh, these words not only can um, express your heart to us, but we can use them to express our heart to you. And I love how you do that with your word, how loving that is, um, that you would do that for us. But Lord, this morning we want to um, just quiet our, our hearts, our minds, even our bodies to, to sit at your feet, to hear from you this morning, to learn from you. And um, we just um, call on your spirit to, to speak into what each one of us needs um, to hear, um, that you will um, encourage us and teach us and um, give us um, what we need, feed us, Lord, in the way that we need, Lord, in order to be able to do the week that is ahead and even the months. So, Lord, we just um, commit this time to you and thank you in advance for what you will say. In Jesus' mighty name we pray now. Amen. Morena again, buenos dias, good to, um, to see you again. Hey, really want to get into the, the sermon this morning. Like I said in the intro, I'm so excited about this psalm. I, I think this is probably my favourite psalm, right? And I know I say this in church all the time, that I have a favourite verse, but then I read another verse and that becomes my favourite verse. But I, I think this is my favourite, either this or Psalm 23, maybe Psalm 40. I don't know, I'm a bit of a... A guy that loves the Psalms. Hey, I'd really be encouraging you to read a Psalm um, a day at the moment. Uh, I know heaps of people are doing great uh, during lockdown and now we're in level three, so there's a bit more, a little bit more freedom. Um, but also know a lot of people are just finding it a really tough time. And so a really easy way to connect with Jesus each morning is just to read a Psalm. Um, some of them are really short. You can read them in less than a minute. Um, what a cool way to connect with Jesus. Um, so a simple way to do it would just to be do a little prayer. Hey, Jesus, God, can you speak to me this morning as I read? Um, read one of the Psalms. It's, you don't need a reading plan or anything because they're like numbered. Just do one on the first day, two on the second day. Read the Psalm and then just spend a minute or two reflecting. Maybe journal something, just write something. You know, what's God saying to you? Is there a change He's asking you to make? Is there something He's, he's blessing you with? You know, and then just a little prayer God, be with me today. Remind me of this truth. And then off into your day, right? An easy way to, um, to be just connecting with God. Um, so, yeah, we're working through these Psalms uh, for the next uh, month or two. Uh, as Dave introduced it last uh, week, so we were we did Mark as a maturity series, remember, and then we were going to go into Second Timothy, uh, which is a really cool book. It's the last letter that Paul, um, the apostle, writes, and in Second Timothy, he's really charging um, this kind of young pastor uh, Timothy how to lead and how to be a mature Christian. We thought that'd be a good flow on, but I talked to the elders at the beginning of last week, and we felt just with what's going on and where some people are at, it'd be better to uh, look at a psalm each Sunday 
for a while because there's so much encouragement and, and uplifting of our souls in the Psalms, right? Um, next Sunday, though, on the 10th is Mother's Day. So I've been talking to the staff team uh, about some different um, ideas for next Sunday. There'll still be some cool worship and a cool message and all that, right? We come to, together to, to worship the Lord, to honour Him. Uh, and to connect um, but we're going to sow some bits of um, mothers cool mother's day stuff in there too so that should be a cool sunday so i'm looking forward to that hey, let me start with a bit of a, um, a story and if you've ever had kids you can totally relate to this or if you've been a kid which most of you probably have been um, i used to love playing hide and seek with my um, daughters hands up who loves hide and seek yeah Okay, hands down. Um, hands up if you're an adult, and to be honest, if no one was looking, you'd still love to play hide and seek. Yep, yeah, I know, there's a bunch out there. Micah, I can see your hand, bro. Um, I love it, I used to love playing hide and seek. I think I enjoyed it just a bit more than my um, daughters, and a as you will have seen, when they were real little, I remember my smallest daughter, when she was real little, we'd play hide and seek, and she'd just stand in the middle of the lounge and go like this. <laughs> and it's that crazy thing, I can't see you, so you can't see me, I'm hidden. You know, it's like, wow, where is she? You know, and you're pretending. Um, but as my daughter got older and older they just got better and better at hiding and there was heaps of times where I just could not find them and we used to have a thing where um, if someone had been searching for ages and you weren't found or if you were the searcher and you couldn't find them you'd just start calling out caca caca and then whoever was hiding or the searcher had to caca back so and I remember heaps of times as my girls got older I've searched the house and I'm like the adult and I just could not find those little rats. And so I'd be walking around the house, caca, caca, and then you'd hear from the weirdest place and I'd be like, what are you doing? Um, I, we played hide and seek a lot when they were little. I just absolutely um, loved it. One of the crazy things you're going to see uh, in Psalm 139 is we, we kind of unpack it together, right? It's a together thing because I'm explaining, but you've got to wrestle and think and read along, make sure I'm not just making stuff up. So as we unpack Psalm 139, together you're going to see that although David is incredibly deep and incredibly insightful in the psalm there's also a little sense that at the in the middle you'll see it and I'll talk about it that he starts getting a little bit like "Ooh, God knows so much about me this is a bit scary and it's like he kind of wants to hide away um, but then it's straight away he goes that's impossible we can't hide from God right it's kind of like my daughters when they're really little. There was no way they could hide from me. They'd stand in the corner and be hidden. And I'd be like, gee, where are they? Um, it's the same with us and God. If we wanted to hide from God, we just really couldn't. Um, but David brings this big thread through the whole psalm that we're going to see that shows there's no reason why we would ever want to hide from God, right? Even though he knows everything about us. Even though that can feel a little bit overwhelming and a little bit intimidating and a little bit like revealing. <laughs> um, there's this key theme that goes through it that makes us realise, no, I just don't ever want to um, hide from God. Um, to, to explain where I'm going, I gave this um, sermon, this, this title, God thinks in love about me all the time. God thinks in love about me all the time. Why don't you turn to a few people around you and say God thinks in love about me all the time. If you're watching this by yourself, um, unless you're like um, with some weird people around you, maybe just say it out loud. Say it to yourself. Hey, Craig. Hey, <laughs> Craig. Um, God thinks in love about me all the time. I know it's not very good grammar, uh, but as I go through, you'll see what I'm trying to say with that. Let me start with this quote from Derek Kidner. So Derek Kidner, um, he's the one that commentated on the book of Psalms and the Tyndale Old Testament commentary, which is a pretty good commentary. And I love what he says. He's reflecting on the whole of Psalm 139, so here's the quote. Uh, Any small thoughts that we may have of God are magnificently transcended by the psalm. I love that. Yet for all its height and depth, it remains intensely personal from first to last. Man, I love that. Eh? I love this idea that, it, that there's so many massive concepts about God's relationship to us. This, this psalm is a lot more about God relating to us rather than us relating to God. Um, there's so many massive concepts about God relating to us that you could feel like it's just going to be very impersonal. But it's not the way David writes it. He just makes it beautiful and so personal. I just love this psalm. Um, just an interesting thing to note is David's a great poet. 
this psalm fits into four very equal stanzas. And when the verses were added, so obviously when the Bible was written, there were no verses, right? It was just sentences and, and, and books and so on. So the verses were added in the 1600s. And when they were added, um, they put each stanza into six verses. So this, this four stanzas, six verses in each one. It's a really cool um, psalm that kind of breaks down pretty easily. So that's kind of where we're going, eh? Hey, TJ read this psalm um, awesomely before. Thanks, TJ. That was really cool reading. Um, so let's uh, just jump into the psalm, and, and I'm going to read a few bits and pieces, but you've kind of already had a bit of an understanding of it. So my first point is this, God sees the invisible. This is from the first six verses, God sees the invisible. So turn to a few people around you, or turn to yourself, and say, God sees the invisible. Hey, another way to say this is that God is the all-seeing one, the all-seeing one. Or another way to say it is that God is omniscient, right? God is omniscient. Omniscient is from omni, all, uh, and then seeant or science, um, knowing. So it's a little bit different than seeing, but as you as I get into it, you'll see it's the same idea. So God is the all-seeing one. Um, God is omniscient. He, he knows everything, right? Um, I love that verse 1. Let me read um, verse 1 um, again here. O Lord, you've examined my heart. You know everything about me. And, and then he unpacks that in the next few verses, and it's kind of like David said, you know everything about me. And then he's like, well, hang on, what does God know about me? Oh, let me explain it. And he just kind of goes, dit, 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 and talks about the things that God knows about us. Again, TJ read it, so I'm not going to unpack the whole thing again, but just to summarize it in these verses, um, what does the Lord know about us? The Lord knows all I do. He knows my thoughts. Now, again, this is one of the bits where you could stop and think and go, ah! <laughs> Is God in my head? What the heck? Man, I do a pretty good job of portraying someone who's wise and spiritual, but in my head they can just be crazy thoughts, right? Does God know all that? Ah! But again, there's this good bit coming. So remember I said at the beginning, you can look through the psalm and start freaking out. Um, but there's this key theme that David keeps bringing back that makes us go, freak out. No, no, it's okay, right? So I'm just listing what David says God knows. He knows all I do. He knows my thoughts. He knows where I travel. He knows what I say. I love that, that phrase in there. Um, and then in verse 5 and verse 6, he, he, he brings this key theme through, right? Um, that God is literally surrounding me with love and blessing. He is before me and he follows me. Um, man, I just love that. Let me read that little bit. Um, again, this is verse 5. Uh, he says, uh, you go before me and follow me. You place your hand of blessing on my head. I just love that, eh? Um, in David's time, I mean, David's writing this, um, so what are we, like 3,000 years ago, when David wrote this, someone who was receiving a blessing would come to someone, usually more important than themselves, and they would kneel or bow, uh, maybe stand, but normally kneel or bow before that person, and the person giving the blessing would literally put their hand on their head, and it was a sign that I am now bestowing a, a covenant on you, a promise on you, and it might be a prayer to God, it might be a statement of their intent to care for this person or protect them, or hope for their future. It was things like that. It was quite a significant thing to, to receive this blessing. And I just love that David brings this imagery in. And I love that God inspired David to write this, knowing that 3,000 years later, give or take, when we don't talk about blessing, this image would come to us. And this is the image I get it when I, when I look at that little bit. That God, the creator of the universe, and I know God is spirit, but I can talk about Jesus being the physical manifestation of God and all that, so let's not get too carried away. God the Father comes to me, um, I kneel before him, and he places his hand of blessing on my head, and he goes, Craig, I know everything about you, and there's some crazy stuff about you. But man, let me bless you. <laughs> let me love you. Um, man, I love that image. <laughs> Are you able to pause for a second in the sermon and, and maybe close your eyes? Maybe just imagine. Um, we, we don't have an image of God the Father, but just imagine the creator of the universe comes to you. Um, in Revelation 21, John writes at the end that we will see God face to face. So something changes in our relationship with the Trinity as we begin the new heavens and the new earth at the end of human time. Uh, but I just love this image. So maybe pause for a second and just stop and think. Man, you know your thoughts. <laughs> you know where your mind goes. And just stop and imagine, man, the all-powerful creator of the universe who knows everything about you. 
He comes to you and he places his hand on your head in blessing, not in judgment. Not in judgment, but in blessing and love. <laughs> it's kind of like even though he knows everything about you, <laughs> even though he knows your thoughts and your words and your actions. <laughs> um, and he blesses you. I love that, eh? I love that. And I love David's response in verse 6. And I think this should be our response as well. David then just goes, oh, such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too great for me to understand. I love how Eugene Peterson translated these, these verses in, um, in the message translation. He says, I look behind me and you're there. Then up ahead and you're there too. And remember, he's not saying it in a scary way like, whoa, God's all around me. It's like, with, a, with, a, with an attitude of love, God is around me. And then he says, your reassuring presence coming and going. This is too much, too wonderful. I can't take it in. <laughs> I love that, eh? It's beautiful. Do you realize how loved you are by the creator of the universe? Do you realize that he looks at you 24 hours a day, seven days a week, <laughs> um, in love, <laughs> desires to bless you, desires you to see that he delights in you, that he loves you. Man, I love that. He holds your head in his hands, pronounces a blessing over your life. Mm, I just see that as beautiful, man. Hey, so the first point to me is overwhelming, which is what David said in verse 6. God sees the invisible, right? He sees the invisible, our thoughts. Um, the second point in this amazing poem to me is just as incredible. Um, the second point is God penetrates the inaccessible. God penetrates the inaccessible. Why don't you turn to a few people around you or turn to yourself and say, God penetrates the inaccessible. Another way to say this is God is the all-present one, or God is omnipresent. So the first stanza is like God is omniscient, right? He's all-knowing, he's all-seeing, right? Um, and the second one is um, God is omnipresent, he's, he's everywhere. And, and the title I gave this section is God penetrates the inaccessible, because when you read through that psalm, you see that some of the places that David talks about God is, it's like, how is God even there? It's like, that's not accessible, and it's because God is omnipresent, he is everywhere, right? I love that. Um, one of the things you kind of see, this is where you see David kind of run. And I read several books on this when I was studying this week. And some of the commentators I, I found in my little humble <laughs> study and go a bit far. And they kind of feel like David did that first stanza. And the reality that God knows everything in his thoughts almost makes David want to run and hide. And you see that in the first few um, lines of this next stanza. We can hide from your spirit, this idea. I, I don't think he's saying that at all. I think David's saying this in love, man, there's nowhere I could go. There's nowhere I could hide from God and God's not there to bless me, to love me, to guide me, right? Um, I love that. So yeah, give it a read and see what you think. And, and I'd love to, to chat with you. Eh? Feel free to disagree with me. But I, I love that, right? To me, this whole stanza is about God being everywhere, about there being nowhere that we would go that God is not already there to, to bless us, to care for us, right? Like we saw in verse 5. He wants to put his hand of blessing on our head. It's not a, a, a judgment. It's not a fearful thing. Uh, my favorite little bit in this, um, my favorite sentence uh, in this little section is verse 10. Um, he says, you know, he says, I can go here, I could go there, I could go there. And then in verse 10, he says, even there your hand will guide me. I love that imagery again, this hand imagery, right? Even there your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I love that your hand will guide me. Your strength will support me. Let me be a little rude um, to you this morning. In love. <laughs> um, you sin a bunch. <laughs> and you mess up a bunch. <laughs> um, I sin a lot. I mess up a lot. Probably more than you. Um, <laughs> we disobey God through arrogance, through ignorance, through submission to the wrong forces in our lives. Right? We do. We mess up. Yet God continues to love us. And pour blessing into our lives. And why is that? Is that because you are an amazing, awesome person? Well, you are, but that's not why God continues to bless us. Um, because deep down, God tells us that we are wicked. We know this is true. We know if there's certain things, if we could get away with them and no one knew, there's certain evil schemes that some of us have thought about. Not me, of course, I'm a pastor, but some of you evil people. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Um, God continues to love us because he is love. 
It's not anything about us that causes us uh, him to love us. It's because he is love that causes us to be loved. And, and, and this brings huge security into our lives, right? You may change, yet God does not change in his love for you. Situations may change, yet God does not change in his love for you. Circumstances in your life outside your control may change, yet God does not change in his love for you. Your financial security may change, yet God does not change in his love for you. Your family situation may change, yet God does not change in his love for you because he is the unchanging God who is love. It is not dependent on who you are. So God knowing your thoughts, God knowing where you go is not going to affect his love for you because it's based on who he is, not based on who you are. I just really love verse 9, and this is a little bit of a sidetrack, but I just love this verse, so I'm going to go with the microphone, so bad luck. Let me read this, I love this. Um, David says, if I, he's talking about, you know, where could I go? God's everywhere. And he says, if I ride the wings of the morning, if I dwell by the farthest oceans, even there your hand will guide me, and your strength will support me. Um, it's cool to remember David's writing this in Israel, and so if you look at a map in your head, or actually bring one up on... Um, on the laptop or whatever um, you'll see Israel it, it, the sun rises in the east like it does on most of the planet um, and so what David's saying is that and then, then the ocean is on the west right and so what David's saying is man if I look to the east the sunrise God's there if I look to the west the ocean God is there and I always imagine this and David um, there's a lot of indication that David wrote some of these psalms maybe when he was or started writing them started you know coming up with thoughts when he was a shepherd or uh, maybe younger before he was a king because there's so much about creation and stars and stuff that he would have seen when he was a shepherd boy just sleeping out under the stars and one of the things I often think about when I think uh, I read that that verse in there is man I wonder did David maybe when he was a king and he's writing this as a king I don't know but maybe as a shepherd boy he's lying on a rock in the middle of the wilderness right and there's no lights around so the stars would have just been incredible and he's lying there and he's looking up and he's just like whoa looking at this incredible expanse of the heavens and he's like man no matter where I go I could go to the east <laughs> I could go to the west I go to the north I go to this man no matter where I go God is there to guide me <laughs> God is there to strengthen me can I ask you to, to do a, a thing um, I know at church, and we usually tell you to do stuff, you just ignore us. Let's all turn up at 10, and people are turning up at like 20 past, and it's just chaos at church, right? Um, but one of the things I'd love to ask you to do is, uh, one of the nights coming up, maybe tonight, maybe this week when there's a clear night, a clear sky, could I ask you to go outside just for a couple of minutes and just look at the, the stars, and just pause and just go, wow, this thing is massive, <laughs> this heavens. <laughs> And just stand there for a few minutes, allow your eyes to adjust to the stars and then just kind of start thinking, wow, no matter how far I go to the east, no matter how far I go to the west, no matter how far I go to the north, no matter how far I go to the south, <laughs> God's hand of blessing is on me. <laughs> His hand is there to, to guide me, to strengthen me. Maybe just stand on those stars for a few minutes and just listen to the Lord saying, yeah, this is true. I, I delight in you. I love you. And I, I love that, that imagery that David keeps bringing out, right? Okay, so the first point was God sees the invisible. The second stanza was, or stanza was, God penetrates the inaccessible. And here's the third one, um, God directs the incomprehensible. Can you turn to a few people around you and say, God directs the incomprehensible. I love this stanza. This is just so powerful. If you haven't read this lately, man, please pause the video. Or well, once it's finished, go somewhere quiet and just read, read the psalm. But read this stanza. Just beautiful the way David has written this. Um, God directs the incomprehensible. God is the all-powerful one. God is omnipotent, omnipotent, all-potent, all-powerful, right? We're seeing God's omniscient, all-knowing. Um, we're seeing God's omnipresent. He's everywhere. And then David shows us in this one that God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. 
Um, and the question that rises as you read this one is, man, does anyone really understand how human life happens? And the answer is like, they have no idea. Yeah, with the sperm and the egg and the zygote and all that fetus, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, we understand that. But if I said to them, but how does the mind develop? It's like, what? How does a soul really? It's like, I got nothing, man. We have no idea, right, how human development really happens. I love how David talks about this, that God is intricately involved in that, weaving me together. Ah, oh, this is so beautiful. So beautiful. I hope you've seen, right, David, just before this, um, verse 9, he's talked about the expanse, you know, of the heavens. And now the next stanza is like, man, let me go now microscopic <laughs> to look at the development of a human fetus within the womb of a, of a mum. It's just such a beautiful image of God's care and God's love for us. Uh, my favorite little uh, stanza, again, with this theme of love, right, uh, is verse 14. Let me read um, verse 14. I've actually got it on the screen for you. It says, thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How will I know it? Every time I read this, I just laugh. Um, and I, David's awesome. I'm not judging David. And maybe it's just me being slightly weird. But I always think this is kind of funny because the way I read this is it's like David's looking in a mirror and um, he's just wearing like um, little shorts, right? He's not naked. This is getting weird, right? So he's wearing small shorts. And he's looking in the mirror and he goes like this. Whoa. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex, God. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. Now, always admit, it's a little bit of like arrogance, like, whoa, check me out. I'm mighty fine. You know, good job, God. Man, when you were creating me, you know, in the Trinity, you did a great thing. You know, I'm just like, whoa, David's the man. I just find that kind of funny. I love it. Um, Sir Isaac Newton, there's a really famous quote about Sir Isaac Newton. If you've forgotten um, from high school history about Isaac Newton, uh, he was an English physicist, mathematician, astronomer, philosopher, alchemist, everything else. He wrote a book, um, which is in French, which I can't um, pronounce, um, to do with mathematics in 1687. That They still, I did a bunch of um, checking, they still consider to be one of the most influential uh, books in the history of science ever. So it's like, this guy knows, he's smart, right? He knows what he's talking about. And, and this little quote here, like we're thinking about this verse, right? God's workmanship is marvelous. And this is what Isaac Newton said. Uh, In the absence of any other proof, the thumb alone would convince me of God's existence. I just love that, eh? He's just like, man, this thing's amazing. You know? I just love it. Hey, let me finish the message today reflecting on these verses from Psalm 17 and 18. Let me read them to you. They'll be on the screen. How precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, you are still with me. Now, I love this. This last little section here. And I know then David goes on and he kind of goes, he's just baffled that enemies, that people don't understand God when he's talked about how awesome God is. And he gets just so angry as David does. And then right at the end, he comes back with that beautiful, oh, just examine me, God. Point out any wicked way in me. I love that, right? But let me finish just looking at, at these verses. Um, that first verse is real uh, interesting, that first sentence. Uh, how precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. Uh, if, you, if you remember, Hebrew was written originally without vowels. And so uh, there's certain words that when you see it, the word could be constructed either way, depending on what vowels you add and, and how they're put in. Um, and so this is one. So you'll see in some uh, translations, so for example, the ESV and, and some others would say it the other way around. How precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. So how precious to me are your thoughts, O oh God. So I'm amazed with your thoughts. Um, but you can equally say it in, in the Hebrew when you add the vowels. Uh, how precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. So you can say it either way. And so I, I've heard this for years and I wanted to study it a bit this week. And so I read in several books and, and they were all saying it's totally fine to look at it either way. There's heaps of other, I had a lot of other verses, but just of time I snuck them out. So I apologize for that. But you, you can find other verses that say the same thing either way. Um, and, and I'm going to stick with the New Living Translation. And I just love this idea um, that God thinks about us all the time, right? Um, all the time. God thinks about us in love, not in judgment. Um, he is in love with you. He's in love with me. He's with us to bless us. We saw that in verse 5. He's with us to guide us. He's with us to strengthen us. God delights in you, and you see it just so clearly through the psalm. 
I want to finish with this little quote. I was doing a devotion um, this week uh, in Uvision, uh, just on the psalm, and this quote from Greg Matt I thought was just so beautiful. So it's in two sections. So let me put this first section up. We'll, or they'll put it up on the screen. Um, he says, where does value come for humans? What makes us different from a cat or a dog? I'm like, man, a lot. Cats and dogs are idiots. Um, the, and, and this is his response. The fingerprint of God. Not only does he love you, he likes you. It's cool. He created you and has a plan for you. His thoughts about you are as numerous as the grains of sand on the sea. Nobody else thinks of you this much. And just pause on that statement for a second. Nobody else thinks of you this much. I, I just love that. The person that thinks about you the most is, oh, I don't know, the creator of the universe. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then he thinks of you in love. Remember the whole title for this, this message was God thinks in love about me all the time. God thinks in love. He's in love with you. He's in love with me. And he thinks about us all the time. Um, and then carrying on this quote from Greg Matt, he changes now and he speaks as God and he says this, in the midst of the pain, my thoughts are towards you. In the midst of joy, my thoughts are still towards you. And I love this last bit. Listen to this. I have thoughts towards you because I have been weaving you together since day one. <laughs> I have thoughts towards you because I have been weaving you together since day one. And I love that, eh? I love that. Some of us became Christians really early in our lives. Some of us did all sorts of crazy stuff and became Christians later in our lives. But I love this truth. God has thoughts about you. God is in love with you because he's been weaving you together since day one. God thinks in love about me all the time. He doesn't just think about me continually. He thinks about me in deep love all the time. Man. Yeah, Almighty God, we call out to you in the name of your Son, Jesus, and we just go, oh. I just kind of echo what David said in verse, verse um, 6, like, wow, this is too much for me to understand. This is too marvelous for me to comprehend that God knows everything about me. He knows my thoughts, my words. He knows everywhere I go, everything I do, and, and yet he loves to bless me. He loves to guide me. He loves to strengthen me. He thinks about me in love all the time. Man, God, you're amazing. Eh? We're so blessed as your people. I just pray right now for anyone watching this, wherever they are on the, on the planet, in Kirikiriroa, wherever. Eh? I just pray that the truth of this psalm would just resonate and sink deep into their soul, God. If there's anyone right now listening thinking, no, yeah, yeah, this is all good, Craig, but... Not me, bro. I pray that you would help them see that, man, they are missing incredible truth about you. It's not anything about them that causes you to love them. It's that you are a God who is love. Thank you that you delight in us. Thank you that you see us as beautiful. Yeah. Pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Cool. Kakite anō. Family, thanks heaps for joining us this morning. And as we wrap up, I just want to say how much we love you and how much we miss you and how we are really looking forward to the day that we can once again come together as a community, as a church family, and, and be physically present with each other. Uh, and we are counting down the days, however figurative they may be, uh, in this season that we find ourselves in, till we are able to do that again. And so this morning, we want to end with a benediction, a blessing, a prayer over you um, and our community. And so we just invite you to put yourself into a position of receiving, whatever that may look like. Um, it could just be putting your hands out um, as a, a way of physically saying, I receive uh, this blessing uh, from, from God. Uh, or it could be like a, a sitting up straight and, a, and, in, and engaging in, in both mind and heart and body uh, by just kind of like becoming just that bit more present uh, to this moment and to God's presence with us. And so this morning, I'm going to be reading from uh, Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 17. 
the prayer that we are praying for you during this time till we get to see you and as we miss you is this. Now, may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Family, we miss you. We love you. And we cannot wait to see you again. Uh, but till then, um, we pray uh, that uh, you will be increasingly uh, aware uh, and growing in your awareness of uh, the love of God uh, that he has for you, uh, namely in the person of Jesus. Uh, and so as we head into this week, uh, for many of you, uh, this may be your first uh, um, week back at work. We just are praying that you would not just know about God's love, but that you would know personally God's love in an experiential way as he shows that he is with you and that he is for you. Mm. Kia ora whanau.